So apparently we've been testing your hearing the wrong way for decades. Hey guys, Cliff Olson, doctor of audiology and founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Phoenix, Arizona. And in this video, I'm talking about a new study that could change the way that hearing tests are done forever, especially if you struggle in background noise. With that being said, what if somebody told you that the way that you've been doing your job for the last 50 years was the wrong way? Well, that is kind of what this video is all about. I mean, back in 2012, on my first day of grad school to become an audiologist, they taught us two main things about testing somebody's hearing. The first one was pure tone testing. This is when you play beeps for somebody and they click a button to let you know that they heard them. The other one was word recognition in quiet. This is when you play some recorded words to somebody and they repeat those words out loud back to you and you score them based on what percentage of those words they got correct. They taught us these things as foundational components of a comprehensive hearing evaluation, both of which have been used by audiologists for decades in order to diagnose and treat a variety of different types of hearing loss. But you know what? There is a good chance that we have all been doing this the wrong way for basically ever, thanks to a new study that was released in 2023 in the Journal of Ear and Hearing. But before I get to the specifics of what they said inside of this journal article, if you could do me a huge favor and click the like button, it really helps out the channel because it gets these videos in front of a broader audience. And while you're at it, if you have not yet hit the subscribe button with notification bell, go ahead and do that as well because that ensures that you never miss one of my newly released videos. And I publish a ton of new videos every single week. That being said, it's greatly appreciated. Now let's get on with the video. Okay, so a lot of hearing care professionals have known for a long time that traditional hearing tests, especially those free hearing tests that you see advertised in a lot of clinics out there, do not really tell a full story about your hearing difficulties. When performing a hearing evaluation, you need pure tone air and bone conduction testing, you need speech reception thresholds, and you need word recognition scores. According to Medicare, this is actually considered a comprehensive hearing evaluation, although it is not really that comprehensive. Especially when you consider that the number one complaint of pretty much everybody who has hearing loss is that they have difficulty understanding speech in background noise, like when they go to a restaurant or other social engagements. And as you may have noticed, none of those tests that I mentioned inside of a comprehensive hearing evaluation have anything to do with evaluating your performance in background noise. And if you never get tested in an environment that simulates where you actually have the most hearing difficulty, then your hearing care professional can't possibly know how well you would do in a background noise situation. Fortunately, there are a variety of different types of tests that can test your performance in background noise, but probably the most popular test is the quicksense. The QuickSyn is a test that simulates you being inside of a noisy environment and it requires you to listen to sentences that you have to repeat back to the person testing you. The background noise gets louder and louder to the point where you can no longer understand the sentences that you're listening for and that gives us your signal to noise ratio loss score or SNR loss score for short. The SNR loss score is in decibels and it tells us how many decibels of separation you need of speech over the background noise before you can understand 50% percent of what is being said to you. Obviously, the lower this number, the less separation you need of the speech from the background noise before you can hear, and the larger this number, the more separation of speech you need. So let's assume that you have a SNR loss score of one decibel. That means that you only need a one decibel separation of the speech that you're listening to versus the background noise. So if the background noise is measured at 70 decibels, you only really need the person talking to you to be one decibel louder than that background noise so you can hear them. However, if you happen to have a 10 decibel SNR loss score, that means that you need speech to be 10 decibels louder than the background noise. And a 10 decibel increase in volume is a doubling in volume. So technically speaking, you need the person that you're talking to to be talking twice as loud as the background noise so you can hear them. This test is critical if your hearing care professional wants to understand how much difficulty you are having in a background noise situation. And the worst news is, is that less than 15% of hearing care professionals perform this test. And this article by Matthew Fitzgerald and colleagues that was published in the Journal of Ear and Hearing 
explains why this speech and noise testing is very important for you to do. Now, some hearing care professionals may argue that if you do good on your word recognition and quiet testing, that you would also do good in background noise testing. And if you do poorly in word recognition and quiet testing, that you would do bad in background noise testing. So they basically say, why do speech and noise testing at all? Well, this new article in the Ear and Hearing Journal by Matthew Fitzgerald and his colleagues indicate that this is not really the case. This scatter plot really tells the whole story about what they found inside of this article. After comparing the Quixin scores of 5,808 patients with their word recognition scores in quiet, we can see that even with good word recognition in quiet scores between 80 and 100%, a lot of these individuals have Quixin scores in the moderate difficulty range and some even in the severe difficulty range, which means that they still struggle significantly in background noise despite having really good word recognition scores in quiet. If good word recognition and quiet scores were accurate predictors of background noise performance, we would see all of these dark red dots between 80 and 100% concentrated primarily in the normal to mild difficulty range towards the top left corner of this graph. So according to the researchers of this article, what were the key takeaways? Well, I counted pretty much three of them. Now that article was a terrific article and it had a lot more information inside of it, so I will link it down in the description of this video. It is definitely worth going over and having a read. But there were a couple of key takeaways that I found inside of this and recommendations by the researchers that you should know about. The first key takeaway is that word recognition scores in quiet are not a good predictor of your ability to understand speech and background noise. Second, good performance on your Quixin speech and noise test is a good predictor of your ability to understand speech in a quiet environment. And third, you would be better served to have a speech and noise test completed like the Quixin by your hearing care professional than having a speech recognition and quiet test done. Essentially, obtaining your score in a background noise situation with a test like the Quixin would help us better understand how you should expect to do in a background noise environment with appropriately fit hearing aids, and it would also tell us how well you would expect to do in a quiet situation. As far as the researchers' recommendations, let me go ahead and share their conclusions. Taken together, these data suggest that speech and noise measures provide more information than word recognition in quiet. More important, the predictive power of our model suggests that speech and noise can replace word recognition and quiet in most instances by providing guidelines as to when performance in quiet is likely to be excellent and does not need to be measured. Making this subtle but profound shift to clinical practice would enable routine audiometric testing to be more sensitive to patient concerns and may benefit both clinicians and researchers. So basically what they're saying here is that you would be better off just getting rid of the word recognition and quiet testing and replace it with speech and noise testing. Honestly, this isn't that bad of a recommendation, but deep down inside, I'm like, why not just do both? I mean, I would argue that it is in your best interest to have a fully comprehensive hearing evaluation to include speech and noise testing, not giving up one thing to get another. Does it take more time? Yes. Is it worth it? Well, you tell me. I mean, if making sure that we have a full understanding of both your ability to hear in quiet and hear in background noise is important to you, then I would say it is absolutely worth it. And this is exactly why both word recognition in quiet and speech and noise testing are considered best practices. And if you ask me, why wouldn't you want your hearing care professional to perform both of these so they could have a full understanding of your auditory system, especially in the areas that you have the most difficulty, which are likely best background noise situations. That being said, if your hearing care professional's priority is saving time, then you're probably going to the wrong clinic. Which is why I always recommend that you find a hearing care professional who follows comprehensive best practices so they test both of these aspects of your hearing. And the best way to find one of these rare practitioners is to go to my website, hearingup.com, and finding a Hearing Up Network member in your area. Hearing Up members are committed to taking the time necessary to perform all best practices, including word recognition and quiet 
and speech and noise testing so they not only have a full understanding of your hearing loss, but so they can also make the best treatment recommendation possible. As an audiologist, I believe that it should be our goal to have a full understanding of what your hearing loss is, not just in background noise, not just in quiet, but across the board. Because if I'm gonna make a recommendation to you about treating your hearing loss, I feel like I should have a really good understanding of what you're going through. But at least now we have some research that tells us exactly what we suspected all along, which is you cannot take a speech recognition and quiet test and assume that someone would perform that way in a background noise environment. You have to perform speech and noise testing for us to get a full understanding of your performance. So do yourself a favor. If you are going to schedule a hearing evaluation, first of all, stay away from those free hearing tests because chances are they're going to be cutting corners on a whole variety of different things that they would need to know about your auditory system. And second, make sure that they are going to do a speech and noise test like the QuickSyn so they can have a full understanding of how you do in background noise.